often wonder if we really know what education is anymore. When we have our students, our children, sit and check boxes and have to have this perfect GPA to go to college, to get an education. So that's the only thing that matters because we're afraid that they too might end up on the streets if they don't get that education. The people that we met at the Grace House had hope that their luck could change, that if they could just get a job, if they could just get a job, if they could just get a job, and then get transportation. Because we don't have good public transportation. If I could just get a job, and then I, if I could just get there, then I could just get a house, then I could just get... We talked about that. But they also had so much to teach your children. The education is what you just heard. What they said, what they wrote, all of it was original. They listened with a whole heart to another human being who we often just say, oh my gosh, go, 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 don't look at them. All the things that you heard at the opening of the show, they gathered. Those are things that they heard. Those are things that teachers have said. They asked their teachers, I'm working with the homeless. Give me a word about the homeless. Dirty. Drug addicts, alcoholics, prostitutes. You heard them all. Some of those things are true. And I'm going to be brave enough to say, uh, my brother was homeless. My children, these kids know this. My brother was a good, good man. He owned his own business. His body was breaking down. Carpal tunnel in both arms. No feeling in either hand because he worked a chainsaw. Both knees blown out from football. Degenerative bone loss and fractured spine bits. So pain pills were prescribed so my brother could get out of bed to do his job. The problem with that is they gave him pain pills. My brother overdosed when he was 36 years old. Hydrocodone, his prescribed medicine. He was homeless because he was an addict. He couldn't keep his job anymore because he was too worried about his next pill, his next fix. He would jones, you know? He was sick. There was no hope. When my brother died, there was no hope left for my brother. I loved my brother. He had no hope left. He told me the last time that I saw my brother, we were standing washing my mother's piled up dishes because she too was a pill addict. Because she too had degenerative bone loss and back pain and depression. And from one pill to another, she went. Until she gave herself from her prescribed medicines that her doctors gave her, she had to go from one pharmacy to the next because then they twigged on. They're like, no more for you. Go to the next one. Prescribe, get the prescription filled. Then her and my brother and Lee, what do you got? You got anything? 
I don't know, let's ask grandmother. Because my 83-year-old grandmother has degenerative bone loss. And the pain in the back is excruciating. My brother said it's like a toothache in the marrow of your bones times a hundred. That's how he described his back pain. Got back pain? Your body ain't going. The Chinese say you're as young as your spine is flexible. You're as young as your spine is flexible. My mother had a massive stroke because not only was she addicted to her pain pills and then she had about four or five different depression pills because she was an abused woman. My stepfather abused her. He abused all of us. They escaped, unfortunately. I feel they were lifted and I have to believe that. I don't care if it's the truth. I don't care about the truth. This is my, my flesh and blood. I have no family left but my child, my husband, my grandmother, and my sister, and that's it. When you talk about a Thanksgiving or a Christmas, it's in my grandmother's trailer in Charlotte. She's chemotherapy, she has cancer, she's leaving me too. But I know what, I know, I know that they are no less, my brother and my mother, and believe it or not, I had a best friend who ended up being a hell addict as well, who prostituted. She's dead as well. I'm honest to my students. This is my life story. These are the torches I bear. And they are human beings. They are my loved ones. Yeah, we saw some of that at the Grace House. You know why? Because they're not welcomed anywhere else. And they were loved all the same by everyone in that facility. If I know that uh, my family's secret of addiction, they managed to keep homes um, until my brother was sleeping in his car. And he wasn't homeless for long. I had a girl ask me one time, I'm an empowered woman, so I, that means I share my story with others. I'm, I've decided that I want to share. And, you know, not that we all need to do that, not that we all can do that or should do that, but that's just what I've been doing. Because I'm an educator. I'm an educator. Um, and this part of life is what we need an education in. We, we need some education. But what about relationships? What about patience? What about compassion? What about understanding 101? What about listening, active listening, listening, really listening? I have nothing to give you but me listening. The more we are distracted, the more we look at screens, the more frightening it becomes to me. You've all gathered here tonight. You are meant to be here. For whatever reason, I believe that. I believe that when people are gathered, this is the most powerful thing ever. And if you were all to speak, you would all would have me in a, I'm sure, a weeping mess. When do we commune anymore? When do we of community. Some of you have churches and, and, and you do that. Maybe you have good friends and you get together. Um, these young people, these amazing, amazing young people can see because they want a real education. Probably because they're theater kids. <laughs> theater is a study of life and it's the culmination of all the arts. They want to see, they want to learn. They understand that it's not nice sometimes. 
we hope we dispel maybe some thought, because we all have, like Pastor Jack said, if there are five people, there are six opinions. If there are five people, there are six opinions. And I know, before, my, before I saw it materialize, addiction and, and uh, homelessness and abuse and living through it and seeing it and trying to get away from it as fast as I can and go to college to get away, I know that it's not nice to look at and it hurts. It is necessary to see and theater, the very word theater in the Greek root means to see, drama, to do. I think all of you are the most amazing people I've ever met. Um, to write what you wrote in a week and perform it and make a show out of still rehearsing until 6.40. <laughs> I've never done this in the tractor shed. It's been hectic in the tractor shed. But had never have we put something for an audience to see in such little time because we wanted to spend all of our time listening. And for them to write that, to write such personal and creative wordplay and turn of phrase and heartfelt meaning, comes from you guys. You're the support. You're the safety net. And to say to my students, you are what you are. You want an aerial hoop? You aerial hoop. <laughs> you want an aerial hoop, child? You aerial hoop. And you be the dang best aerial hoopist ever. My grandmother said, if I was shoveling, I would be the best shoveler there was. Lucky I didn't slip that up. It's been a long time. <laughs> Where's our spirit? Where's our hard work? You know that bootstrap? This generation ain't like that, y'all. They don't. You, you think they're not like that. You think they can't work. They just want to know what it is they're meant to be working on. Jobs? I don't know. You tell me. What's out there? Go forth. Walt Whitman, go forth. Pioneer, old pioneer. You know what my kids say? Go forth and do what, Miss Rice? I was like, I don't know, but go do it. Theater, there are jobs. I know your parents are scared. You're like, oh my gosh, Mrs. Rice is filling my children's heads. There's jobs in theater. Look, I have I had three seniors go and audition in CTC. Two callbacks to the School of the Arts for undergrad. I have one student right now, alumni of Tractor Shed Theater on Broadway. On Broadway, no lie. On Broadway. Want to go see her? Want to go see her? December. December 23rd, 26th, 23rd, check me. Sydney Shepherd on Broadway. Not off Broadway. On Broadway, first date. It's called Musical First Date. Um, one, two, three, three School of the Arts students, one NYU theater. Do they have jobs? Yes, parents. They have jobs. One's on Broadway. <laughs> yes. If that's, if, if, what is it that you want to go forth and do? It's scary, I know. Well, you have to do something you love. You have to do something that you can respect and that, and that yes, work hard. But a lot of these homeless folks that we met, they said, I'm willing to work hard. I just don't have a job. Um, I'm very blessed to have known all of you, and I'm so glad that you've gathered tonight. Um, thank you for letting me have your, your children. Um, luckily, we didn't do too, too much after school. This was all done in class. Um, luckily, you know, I have a three-year-old now and a 55-year-old husband, and I'm not sure which is worse. <laughs> toddler, old man, toddler, and teenagers. I'm like, don't know if I'm coming or going or already went. 
And I know how precious your all your time is. I just want to say just one more time, just thank you all for being here tonight as a community. Thank you so much for all that you have given the Grace House. If you want to donate, thank you for bringing in bags tonight. Um, if you want to donate, there's information on this page. If you don't feel comfortable giving money, don't give money. Give your socks. Trust me, they're gold. We took some in Thursday when we went. I mean, we were like, look at all these socks. What are we going to do? Lots of boxes. Thursday we went in with what you gave us. And we took it in. Sunday we went in potluck. And there was one little sack glove left in the box. And the socks were like, not even a thread, not even a mismatch. Nothing. They were, um, so you got old socks, you got old coats, you got old scarves. You can take those directly downtown. If you got any questions, ask your children. They know. If not, call me. Call Pastor Jack. He'll be lovely. He'll be happy to talk to you. Thank you, Barringers, for giving us the Grace House, and thank you all for gathering tonight. And uh, may you all be blessed in so many ways and be safe on your way home. And actors, you're not going anywhere. I got pictures to take quickly, and then you can go. Here's your